Hi, today I want to talk to you about options for sharpening tools. That's sharpening as opposed to honing or polishing, which we looked at in an earlier film, um, if you want to check that out. So there are various options for sharpening and I'm going to demystify them a little bit. The thing to remember about sharpening is that all you need to know is enough to keep your tools sharp. Don't be intimidated by all the amazing videos on YouTube by expert sharpeners. Um, I know I say that because I, I'm frequently intimidated, especially out in Japan where sharpening is an absolute art form. So just to run through um, the basic tools before I get started, Again, I should apologise if there's funny noise on this video. The rain is still coming down and still pattering away on the roof of the studio. So what I'm going to start with is an oil stone, which I don't recommend. This is, um, this is a very dirty oil stone that's come out of Ben's workshop, covered in sawdust, and um, the oil rather dinky oil can that goes with it. I don't tend to recommend oil stones for sharpening because they tend to come in coarser grades. So they're not as useful. They're too coarse mainly for what you need to do. The other thing about it is that you, if you use oil stones, you're introducing oil into your studio, which for me is a huge no-no because I know I would spread it everywhere. If you have oil stones and you want to use them in combination with all the water-based sharpening things that I'm going to talk about. The rule is that you can use an oil stone, but you must get all the oil off your tools before you move on to any kind of water stone or product that uses water because um, the oil from the oil stone will mess up water stones and you really don't want to do that. So. Personally, I'm not a fan of oil stones. If it's all you've got, it's all you've got, but I wouldn't rush out and be buying any of them, even though they come with a really pretty oil can, which I quite like. I wouldn't mind keeping that. Um, so let's move on to some things that are more useful. So at the budget end of the market, there is this stuff, and this is called lapping film. And it's basically um, a plastic film with a gritty top for sharpening. Now, I've asked Ben to put all the grades of all the various stones and things across the screen because I would never remember them. And I'm sure you don't want to watch me reading them off pieces of paper as I'm talking. But they come in different grades um, from course right through to I think this one is the finest. Um, and the thing with these is you need to stick them to something. So we have got a piece of glass here. Now this is six mil glass and I've got a bit of non-slip mat so it doesn't slide about. If you are buying yourself a piece of glass, getting someone to chop you up a piece of six mil glass for your lapping film, a good bit of advice is to make decide on well, however wide you want the glass, but make it the width of the lapping film and then you're not going to waste any. You can just cut it to length and it, it has it's like sticky back plastic. You peel it off and then you can stick it down on the glass um, to use. And this will work like a whetstone to use. The disadvantages of it are that it wears out quite quickly and needs replacing. And also it's possible to tear it with the tool. If you catch it with the tool the wrong way, it can tear. It is very cost effective, but you have to weigh that up against the kind of uh, short term use of it. You will need to use it with a squirt of water just to get the tool lubricated when you're working with it. So lapping film is um, one way to go. And then another way to go are these, which are diamond stones. Now, diamond stones are a water stone. They, you use them with a splash of water and they don't need any preparation like soaking. You can use them straight away. You just need to put a squirt of water on and they're kind of good to go. In another film, I will show you the actual sharpening, but for now, I just want to talk about these. They're really hard wearing 
and you can't really do anything with the tool to damage them and they are they're very good i can't complain about them they are not as sexy as natural stone but they do the job one thing you can use with them is nagura stone this you need to use with um, water stones some of the water stones but the um, it's optional whether you want to use a nagura stone with these diamond stones. Nagura stone is, um, you don't use the actual stone to do the sharpening. What you do is you rub the stone into the water and it makes a slurry. And as you rub the stone, the stone gives off little powdery bits that make a sort of slurry of, of slurry of stone hopefully you can see there that helps with the polishing and we tend to use the stone the nagura stone on the diamond stones um, for sharpening but it's by no means compulsory to do that however let's move those to one side if you go down the traditional water stone which is what you tend to see in japan for sharpening then you will need to use a Nogura stone to make a slurry. Water stones are the traditional way of uh, sharpening tools for a lot of people. The disadvantage with a water stone system is that you need to soak your stones before you use them. Some stones can stay in water ready to be used and some people um, actually just keep their stones in water but not all stones uh, work well if they're permanently soaked so you'd need to know whether yours is a sort of can be wet all the time stone or a I have to wet it in advance of sharpening stone. If it's one that you don't keep in water all the time then you need at least 20 minutes or so for the stone to soak in water to sort of bring it up to speed for sharpening and uh, they come in all different grades this is a, a fine one and with the water stones, at some stage, you will have to grind out the ridges of where you've been sharpening uh, with a coarser stone. And the diamond stones that I've showed you are very good. A coarse diamond stone is ideal for grinding out the ridges on a water stone. So we, in fact, our sharpening system looks like this. We have diamond stones at coarser grades and then we finish off on a water stone. And the other thing that I've got is a finishing stone, which is a thing of beauty. Um, I bought it in Tokyo uh, while I was there studying uh, on a residency. And I bought it in a shop that was just sharpening stones. The whole shop consisted of sharpening stones. And it was run by a family. And the father of the family must have been in his, I suppose, late 80s, early 90s. And he was an amazing guy and a brilliant salesman. I have to say we all left with a stone and this one is mine and it is for finishing off tools so it's basically it's like it does the job um, of honing and polishing the tools and so I tend to keep it with beside me when I'm working just to touch up the tools as I work so this one doesn't need soaking um, all it needs when I need to use it is a squirt of water like the diamond stones that I showed you so all I need to get it ready to use is basically to wet the surface of it. But I do use it in conjunction with this stone powder. Now, this is not like the Nagura stone. This is a much finer powder. And I put just a tiny bit of this powder onto the stone and that polishes my tools. And it's, it's brilliant. It works really, really well. But if you don't have access to an expert salesman who specialises in fancy stones, as I suspect most people don't, then polishing on leather will work absolutely fine. So that's the range of stones that we've got. So just to recap, you've got your lapping film here, which is a cheap option, wears out quickly, needs replacing quite often and is possible to tear. You've got your synthetic um, diamond stones here which are virtually indestructible and you can use with just a splash of water no need to soak and a rub of that nagura stone if you fancy but it's no, no means compulsory 
Then you have your water stones, which are lovely things, but they need soaking. They need to be soaked before you can use them. And you, they do get worn with use and need to be ground flat uh, at some point in the future to have them work effectively. And finally, if you want to be really fancy, you can have a finishing stone like this and a little bit of stone dust to use with it. So there's quite a wide range of things that you can do for sharpening and you just need to decide what will suit you. The other thing before I go I wanted to mention is this very battered object here. When I talked about honing tools, um, there were quite a lot of people who asked me about these. I can't remember, I think they're called slip strop or something like that. It's a stropping system, works a treat, nothing wrong with these. If you've got one of these, they're great. They're contoured so that you can hold the tools over and against them, which kind of makes the job easy. Um, so I wouldn't knock them at all. But if you are in lockdown and you have a belt and some scouring powder or some scouring cream, that will do the job too. So that's a brief roundup of the sharpening tools and we will do a film about actually sharpening. So thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me again.